Welcome to the world of Victoire Roo. Emerging victorious from the Second World War, Victoire Roo armed with a killer wardrobe, is on a mission to make the world rediscover Parisian haute couture. Let's have a flashback moment. Our researchers discovered this archive footage of Victoire Rue that has never been aired in public. Immediately after the war, Victoire Rue embarked on a transatlantic crossing from London to New York. Although she was well known in her native city of Paris, she had yet to be discovered in America. The voyage proved to be a turning point in her career. It was on this trip that she met the glamorous movers and shakers that would go on to create one of the Big Apple's most successful agencies on East 59th Street. But that's another story. The doll's first appearance was during the 2011 convention in Chicago, the Jet Set Collection. Faubourg Saint Honoré was the first Victoire Rue doll, wearing a pencil silhouette dress, a yellow bullfighter jacket, a cap with a veil, and a stole made from faux fur. A standalone outfit, Avenue Montaigne, was also part of the collection. Victoire Rue wore the ensemble Avenue George Sank a light gray jacket suit inspired by Dior, to visit the most exclusive boutiques in Paris, until she found everything she needed. Yes, Paris would celebrate in style, and Victoire Rue would oversee it wearing her Champs-Élysées outfit. This dress with butterflies would become one of the most famous and recognizable models of her entire career. A black cocktail dress liberally embellished with embroidered butterflies, worn under a pink swing coat. Victoire also made an appearance at Integrity Toys 2012 Tropicalia convention. A suntan Victoire wore Saint Tropez, a vintage style swimsuit and beach camisole in purple tones. The contrasting silver high heels were clearly designed especially for the beach. The Tropicalia convention also gave us Place Vendôme, a long strapless dress in brown lace, decorated with roses, teamed with long pink gloves, lace shoes and a pearl necklace and earrings. This gown takes its inspiration from Dior of the 1950s, when Yves Saint Laurent was designing for the house. Integrity Toys provided their vintage mannequin with an elaborate, and possibly implausible, backstory. She became the most sought-after model of the 1950s. By virtue of her classic beauty, sophisticated demeanor, and impeccable manners, it was more than evident that Victoire Rue was destined to become the muse of one of the best designers in Paris. The car was discovered by the haute couturier Christophe Marquis, the man who redefined beauty after World War II and brought elegance and femininity back to the fashion scene, after one of humanity's darkest eras. When Christophe Marquis first invited Victoire to visit his boutique to see his collection, sales were a bit slow. The war had had a strong impact on all of Europe. But despite the hardships Victoire Rue had always aimed to dress her best to help boost everyone's morale. In other words, she resisted the invaders through glamour and style. As part of the doll's jet-set lifestyle, during an era when flying was at its most glamorous, it was natural for Victoire Rue to visit Montreal, in the French-speaking province of Quebec, Canada. The future was bright for this fledgling international metropolis, and many celebrities were attracted to its hectic nightlife and French culture. Wearing the outfit, night in Montreal, Victoire Rue pays a visit to La Belle Provence to attend the launch of Christophe's first private collection for Ogilvy, one of the city's leading fashion boutiques. Heads turned when she made her entrance in a brown strapless cocktail dress, with matching tulle bodice, a white fur bolero, and long brown leather gloves. It was July the 8th, 
1951, Paris officially turned 2,000 years old. Victoire Rue was in party planning mode, and couldn't be more excited about the one she was throwing to celebrate 2,000 years of the city she loved so much. She was not only making detailed plans for the event itself, but also for the cocktail reception, and for breakfast the following morning. They all had so many things to be proud of. Not only was the war over, life awaited them as Paris was free and beautiful again, and the era of haute couture had only just begun. Naturally Victoire would not go out to buy an evening dress while wearing just any outfit. The moment she walked into the boutique she saw some outfits that she liked, made some changes to them, adding her own touch, and voila, all the members of the sophisticated Parisian set suddenly began to talk about Monsieur Marquis's little shop on Avenue Montaigne. Fashion history had just received its first Victoria shock treatment, the Poirot style. The morning he first saw her in a cafe in Paris, Christophe was immediately fascinated by Victoire's presence and strong character. A brief glance, a smile, and a good laugh later, the two of them would become the duo of post-war Paris fashion, destined to become the very definition of haute couture for two consecutive decades. During 2014, we discovered that Victoire belonged to the French Resistance, of course she did. She helped to hide paintings by Van Gogh, Monet, and the works of many French Impressionists. Once the war was over, Victoire Rue held a ceremony to return all the hidden works of art to their rightful owners. The gala took place at the Hotel de Ville in Paris and it was attended by all the most important personalities of the time. It is at this gala that the heroism of Victoire Rue is recognized. Of course, Victoire and her fabulous friends could not miss this special occasion to celebrate, at one of the most elegant, and most talked about, events in Paris. The style of Victoire Rue reflects the golden age of couture in miniature. The launch of Christian Dior's new look, in 1947, marked the beginning of a momentous decade in fashion history, one that Dior himself called the Golden Age. <music> Celebrating the end of the war and the birth of a new era, it set a standard for dressmaking in high fashion that has rarely been surpassed. In Paris, couture houses such as Balenciaga, Balmain, and Fath, attracted worldwide attention for elegance and glamour. In London, formal state gowns and impeccable tailoring, exemplified by Hardy Amy's, were renowned. The production of couture was important to the prestige and economy of both France and Britain. While traditionally catering for wealthy private clients, the couture houses also sought new markets. As the decade progressed, they created perfumes, opened boutiques and licensed their designs to foreign manufacturers. By the late 1950s, the leading couture houses had become global brands. Each house was named after its creator, and had a characteristic style. Some lasted for generations, others only as long as their founders were alive. A leading house, such as Dior, employed hundreds of people. On the ground floor, there was a boutique, and upstairs a luxurious grand salon for showing the seasonal collections. A 
personal saleswoman, attended to each client, while fitters, tailors, and seamstresses toiled away behind the scenes. The London couture trade took Paris as its model. Many British designers trained in Paris. For France, the couture industry was vital to the economy. In 1949, Dior alone provided 5% of France's national export revenue. Photography and illustration played a key role in how fashion was perceived and portrayed. In the post-war period however, photography began to dominate. Using natural materials, unexpected locations, and dramatic poses, it introduced an air of modernity that fashion editors liked. It also made photographic models, such as Susie Parker and Barbara Golan, household names. Victoire Rue embodies a top Parisian model from the 1950s, albeit in vinyl form. She was designed to be timeless and iconic. Her vintage style captures all of the elegance and sophistication of Paris in the post-war era.